Hell yeah. Uh, so, we actually have something prepared. Uh, yeah. Do you want to um, do an official start? To what? Welcome to a brand new episode oh. of No More Heroes. I'm one of your hosts, Andy Malfrino. With me, as always, Pat George. Pat George here. No extra names needed. Just the regular ones. Just the regular names. Just the two first ones. Sir. Uh, oh, now you're making a distinguished. What? Sir. Sir George. That does sound like a fancy little... That does make you sound like a fancy little boy. The Duke of Dookie. Patty George. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. All right. I didn't know. I didn't know you were of royalty, but you know. it's there. It's in there. Uh, welcome. Yeah. I'm Andy Malfrina. This is the Duke of Dookie, Pat George, and we have a very special episode of No More Heroes. This is the beginning of a new era of No More Heroes. I know you guys have gotten used to us micro analyzing very subtle things about human existence and just being like, "Hey, you know that guy who made a face at you at the store? You want to talk about that for an hour?" Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. What about that license plate number I memorized of that one person that threatened me in traffic that I'm going to find one day? Yeah. We don't you, have to talk about that guy anymore. You got to figure that out, by the way. I was thinking about that the other night. That's going to be real bad results for you. It's tucked away. Yeah. It's not festering yet, but it's there. You might want to set it free, dude. It ain't fresh. I got to crack a window back there. That's not... <laughs> You might want to let that out. You know, yeah. just let it, just let it run free. You might want to take that to a park and leave it there. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't do well at parks. <laughs> but you know, it, it's it's not about that. It's not about that. It's We're, gonna be the normal stuff that we always tell people the show is about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that was like my big realization yeah. why we had to shift because I go, I'm really telling a lot of people it's a conspiracy pod, and I go. I don't know if we've talked about them. I mean, they hop, they, they they make their way in here and there, but I go, I don't know if we've talked about them really that much for the past two months or yeah. so. But we've been in a transitional period. Uh, Pat's getting, uh, Pat's going to go to jail and get his dick cut off. Um, that's the only place that's free. Thanks yeah, a lot. Yeah, he didn't know, but he yeah. saw that Trump ad, so now he's, uh, oh, I can get a little free surgery here or there. Oh. Uh, get a touch up. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go wrap some of your Asian neighbors. <laughs> you go to the doctor. You're like, hey, can I get a few inches shaved off? Yeah, can you uh, <laughs> give me some of them flappy Johns over here? <laughs> but no. So, uh, but today I wanted to get into like more topics and a good way for me to actually like focus and learn shit because I'm all over the place, baby. I fucking I do a little bit of that, do a little bit of that, and then by the end of it, you're like, what did I even fucking do? Uh, so, to, so for the sake of staying focused, for the sake of staying on topic, we are getting into some different shit. And Pat, let them know what we're talking about today. We just talking about aliens. We talking yeah. about aliens. We're going to be talking about a place called Roswell, New Mexico. And I was really excited to uh, talk about this because actually, if you, <laughs> I was editing up the last episode and it reminded me how little I actually know. Because remember, you were like, at the end of the episode, you're like, all right, we're going to talk about Roswell. We talk for a second. I go, all right, guys, next week. Area 51. <laughs> and you're like, everybody does that though. Everybody I've talked about, because I've actually practiced this a couple times, like I've tried to kind of giving a short rundown or like some brief, like, because everybody is like, oh, like Area 51. Like, eh, yes, it, their Area 51 is involved, but it's kind of like, I think, I believe it's the birthplace or the, uh, unveiling of what was area 51 yeah but the actual thing we we're talking well, about was the incident that happened roswell new mexico well this made well at the end of last episode made me realize how little i actually thought like knew about it or little i thought about it because i didn't like i genuinely said area 51 because i go because you were like, no, 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 Roswell. And I'm in my head like, no, aren't they just the same thing? And yeah. it's like, that's the first thing I realized. Like, Roswell is not at Area 51. Yeah, so it's, uh, I believe, I don't know the exact coordinates of uh, Area 51. I don't think, I don't know if you're supposed to know. But it's it's essentially, it's a situation where this, I, I believe, I don't know exactly, I didn't actually research this part of it, but I don't, this might have been the birth of Area 51 or... Because so the the actual incident itself happened late June. <laughs> Sorry, what? when you uh, Area Fifty One is in Nevada, Roswell's in New Mexico. Yeah. But the first thing that pops up, well, I googled Area Fifty One. There's just a link. Get there. We can get there for a hundred and six dollars on a plane, Pat. Damn. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, that's no a round trip, huh? <laughs> that's a, <laughs> I was going to say, because that's a real cheap price for getting shot on site. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, welcome. Well, have you, have well you there's, s- there's white trucks. There's uh, black helicopters. There's like three stages. Yeah. Like there's actual, like when you try to enter Area 51, there's actual, like, there's like a known. So like people, obviously people find out where it is. People go there. Yeah. And there's like people that. It's almost like uh, it's almost like the same thing as have you ever, have you ever watched uh, Urban Explorers? Uh, I believe so. I was actually just gonna bring something up that I think is Urban Explorers, where every time I've seen a video of guys trying to go to Area Fifty One, you'll just see them like wandering through the desert, and then dudes yeah. with no, they're in like camo and shit, but they got no credentials or yeah. anything on. They just show up and they're like, "Hey, you can't be here." Yeah, and like, is guns. that what urban explorers are? Uh, essentially, yeah, they're people that are like they like to. Th- that might be a cave explorer too. There's like a couple people that accidentally it- stumble on shit in the desert. <laughs> is it also the guys who um they'll go to like. They'll go to like abandoned malls or like abandoned yeah, buildings. Same idea. Yeah. Okay, but uh, abandoned buildings, abandoned like so. And the most thing I keep, I see them a lot of times when I'm watching my gay ass ghost videos, and and there's a lot of times because they'll just be like, "What's that?" And I'm like, "Probably a homeless person. Get out." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not like this is their fucking territory and there's no rules and you're in the yeah. middle of nowhere. But sometimes it could be a ghost. You never know. But Area 51 is one of those places where like people will try to. I don't know what they would be called, actually, because urban explorers means like they're like going into like city dwellings or like buildings that are abandoned malls. Yeah, but I think I think broad strokes like just the act of an explorer exploring an area that's not like the wilderness. Yeah, that is not often explored. And that you you know, you're not like that's the I think the backbone of most urban exploring is, you know, you're not supposed to fucking be there. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're right. Area so, 51 people would kind of be that. But uh, Roswell was, again, it's in uh, New Mexico, about three or so hours, six hours away, probably. Yeah. But so of the research I've done, uh, one of which was, and I, I, I mean, this is gonna, you're going to laugh when I say it, but honestly, a kind of good condensed version of the story yeah. is found in Roswell That Ends Well. An episode of a Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it kind of goes, it, it goes into the alleged sp- stuff a lot of times. Because yeah. all of the records, when people try to go back and actually find the records from Roswell, I do believe they kept real ass records with confidence saying nobody's actually going to look this shit up. And you at, said, at the, some the, point, the, the, the government the, kept those records at Roswell. Like yeah. there was like Roswell, like the people saying like at the Air Force Base or whatever. Yeah, there was like actual records kept, but they had been destroyed. All of the records from October of 1947 through Jan or yeah, October through Jan- January through October. Sorry, January through October of 1947 were destroyed. And the incident happened late June, which makes me feel like. There may be more that nobody ever will know so, that was destroyed that happened earlier in the year. So before we get too before we get too deep into this, because this is not going to be like here's the step by step timeline of Roswell. I have it. Do your but, but do, we can go. Yeah, we yeah. Can do yourself if you're listening to this. Do yourself a favor. Go, you know, read the wiki. I do suggest, this is what I always do whenever we get deep on a topic. Shout out to the last podcast on the left, boys. They always do a phenomenal job uh, doing the, like, timeline rundown or everything. Do yourself a favor. Go check out the timeline, the rundown, but uh, because this will not be the in-depth. It'll yeah. just kind of be us kind of, like, breaking it apart. But These are some do, things that stood out to me. But that- do give the listeners, because I think you'd be able, you'd be better at this than me because you have notes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, okay. So Pat's going to be, like, professional about it. That's crazy. Um, but uh, <laughs> give the people in your best uh, synopsis the general Roswell story. So the actual, like, the, so what I, what I, want to focus on with what we're doing here is is basically like we're going to go through I did the same thing like the, we all have our resources I also like uh, BuzzFeed Unsolved did a really good version of uh, uh, uncovering Roswell very in depth of the like 
the timeline. But the things that – because, again, if you're watching multiple things on it, I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of the same facts yeah. reiterated over and over again. Some of the facts are very important, but I think a lot of the things like the key detail – and nobody brought this up in any of the stuff that I watched – was why were the records from January to October destroyed? So in the later half of 1947, there were like actually a ton of UFO sightings Yeah, reported, like called into the Air Force and shit like that, gotcha. called into the police. Sure, sure. And, and in June of 1947, it's actually – believed and this is another thing i realized nobody seems to bring up i don't think anybody actually witnessed the crash no i remember looking i remember the stuff i was watching and reading and listening to it all started with and it technically didn't happen in roswell it was actually it was actually it's considered roswell because the first guy who discovered the debris the closest police station, Mac the closest police station uh, was Roswell, New Mexico. But yeah, it, it no one saw the actual crash. It actually started with this. Uh, I forget what he was doing specifically. What was his name again? Mac Brazel. Mac Brazel. Shout out Mac. R.I.P. Probably Mac Miller. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's where he got his name. Think about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Big UFO guy. And now he's dead. That's Look why Mac it. Miller was so sad is because he's reincarnated Matt Brazel. No one believed him on Roswell. That's our first, that's our first conspiracy. Yeah, that's, that's our first conspiracy. That's a homegrown conspiracy. Take right a drink. Uh, <laughs> Mac Miller's Mac Brazel. That's why he was so bummed. No one believed him. Uh, but so from what I read, yeah, no one actually saw the crash. It was him. He, I forget what the project he was doing, but he was like, oh, I got all this fucking shit on my farm. I need yeah. to clear it. And he was like going through the debris. And a lot of it was like sticking out as weird. The one thing I kept hearing was like there was this, there was these like metal uh, pieces that you would grab, crumble up, and then when you would let go, it would immediately go back to being uh, straight. Here's a here's a which is exactly like me. Like whenever you test, like try to make (laughs) me not straight, push me. I will always more straight. Hey, dude, I always just figure out. I'm like, dude, I might be alien technology because. Yeah. Oh, that was fucking sick. Just kidding. I'm straight. <laughs> See, look I, how straight he is. Yeah, dude. <laughs> look at his dick. <laughs> <laughs> look at him straight. <laughs> but no, this is a fun list. This is another fun uh, little uh, key point that I, I thought. Here's a short list of the things that were explained to be found in Roswell. Hit us with over it. the time. Uh, uh, over time, a flying saucer. Mm. Rubber strips, tin foil, a rather tough paper, and some sticks. <laughs> Something about a rather tough paper. That is really like it, it's the a rather tough paper. The forties the forties was such an interesting time where it was just like too formal. Where it was just like uh uh you would have this such like a much more eloquent way of speaking, but at the same time there's still a plethora of people being like right. oh, we should murder the gays and I don't know if reversing <laughs> slavery was a good idea. <laughs> it's also been known as a weather balloon. Yep. Awesome. Which was that was a that was all I was reading about that that was off of what was it Operation Monarch? Yes. Yeah. So that's how they correlated it to like. Don't jump too far ahead. Am I jumping too far ahead? Don't jump too far ahead. Thank you. Okay. We're still at memory metal. Memory metal, <laughs> which is I think your favorite term for it. Which is could not be. This is my favorite detail to this. Also, is this no, the straight ass metal? This <laughs> yeah. This is the straight ass me- <laughs> yeah, memory dude. metal. This Hell is yeah. that's the kind of metal that's I a, fucking that's use, new, dude. That's a new fucking subgenre we're we're inventing. <laughs> fucking <laughs> memory metal where we're just fucking straight as fuck. Yeah, we just write a bunch of songs like we love fucking pussy. We love fucking pussies. I'm not gay. But this is my favorite detail about memory metal. Could not be cut, scratched, or burned. So you're you get this substance and you're like, what is it? I don't know. Let's try to fuck it up. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're like, what is this? We have no idea what this is, and they they, they just immediately start going and just like setting it on a fire, trying to cut it and burn it. But that's, that's so different than me because it's weird. Like I would I, put it away until I could find out what it is and then start fucking. Like with it. I love I love these conspiracies. I love all this stuff. But part, one of my biggest fears. 
I joked about it before on an episode of Panties where I was almost just like, dude, what if I could actually like figure out what the general thing was? Yeah. But it's like my other fear is like, what if I do? Right. And that like, because I think the <laughs> the biggest fear of mine is actually like figuring it out and knowing too much because yeah. it's like I like to part of me likes to just sit on the sidelines and enjoy this shit. If I actually was like going for a walk and I found some shit, there would be part of me is like. I might just keep walking. So, okay, so <laughs> so I think I, I don't think you're too unlike Mac Brazel. So Mac Brazel. So uh, officially, it is believed that the crash happened on or before June fourteenth, right? Of forty seven of nineteen forty seven. Yeah. So, but Mac Brazel doesn't discover. Let's just say. So, like, if this is his field, most likely in the middle of nowhere, you probably noticed a fucking crash landing on your property, right? Sure. Most likely, but. He doesn't even check on it until the 4th of July. Doesn't report it to the police until the 7th of July. Okay. So most likely there's probably an aspect of that of like, man, I got to get this shit off my property. Started to clean it up because he did bring some of the materials to the police, which in, in, in they eventually the brought 7th? to the Air Force. Yeah. Okay. They, he brought some of the shit with him. Yeah. And that's actually some of the wreckage that you see in the picture. Yeah, the headline of the flying saucer found, blah, blah, blah. That was actually July 7th or July 9th of 1947. Let me ask you this, because wasn't there a funny thing with that where the news immediately like reported it? Flying saucer. And then very quickly there was like a report from up high that was like, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. So basically what happened was this is a this is a weird thing. So most likely because on July 9th. The local paper uh, is uh, Brazel's mentioned as a harassed rancher who regrets mentioning the saucer. Yeah. So he's most likely <clears throat> kind of in a weird way, probably witnessed the crash landing. Yeah. Kind of was like, I don't know. That's probably just like a, I don't know. There's, or there's nothing bare, happening. Like, I don't know. There's or, like, or bare minimum, he probably heard it. Yeah. And then discovered it fre- like when it was right. fresh. So like. And I, I believe it's reported that were there were a couple bodies found at the scene as well. Oh, and that's a well, you know the whole thing about the Russian shit. Mm-mm. You don't know that element. Oh of no, it? what was that part? Oh, so that was a very. It's like it's always mentioned because uh, there's this writer Annie Jacobson. Mm-hmm. She talks about it, and she's like a she's like a pretty talented writer. She's uh, got a lot of books and everything, so generally well respected. But also, it's one of those things where uh, it was it's her going. This is from an unnamed source, but based off blah, A, B, and C, I really trust the source. So it's. Kind Kind of one of those things you like, you have to take it at arm's length. You have to take it with a grain of salt. But there is a, uh, so it's always mentioned, but it's always, it's highly tested, highly debated where um, there is a, a layer to this conspiracy where the craft was actually a Soviet craft with, um, I believe it was, some people claim it was uh, test subjects it was like it was like deformed, mentally challenged yeah, they were kids. Like, they had like four fingers. Yeah, it was, it was like yeah. these deformed test subjects from Doctor Mengele, I believe, that the that the Soviets sent over here to cause confusion and which and now this is going to be a big theme of mine throughout all this, yeah. which is a perfect thing for our government to say where yeah. it's like because if our government knows way more about this than they're letting on that's a perfect thing for our government to say because we're and at the time world war ii's ended we need a new boogeyman we're gonna make the soviet union the yeah. boogeyman because because like after world war ii ends that's the start yeah. of our government being like we need to make the world. I mean, we're still the doing government it. started getting that itch again. We're that's like, the, we gotta start another world. Well, it's war. like that's like we don't have a guy. It's like yeah. if you're watching, a t- I'm watching Dragon Ball Z right now. They just beat Frieza, and it's like, for writing purposes, it's like you need a new guy that might end the world. So now it's the android saga. They called him that for real, Frieza. Frieza, yeah. 
That's not just like our term on oh, panties. Oh, okay. That's where like, we that's got it. That's a wild from. name for a villain. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, no, no. I'm gonna beat your ass, Frieza. <laughs> and you're like, whoa. <laughs> no, no, we changed Frieza to mean that. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they, I thought they started that. Uh, if you're new to the, if you're new to the panty verse, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a way we say the bad f on a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the hard f. <laughs> the hard f. The, the strong G G O T. The strong G's. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so World War Two. Ends. Yeah. Our government needs, you know, we need to make the world safe for democracy. They're going after all these different uh, communist and socialist countries. And then that's a way to put heat on the uh, USSR, the Soviet Union, right. to get people to be like, to get Do you people. you remember, when did that story come out? When did that was when, when was that reported? Do you remember? Um, like roughly, that probably is probably the fifties, right? That is a great question. Um, I believe it, I I feel like, well. Here's the thing with how information was disseminated. Like I was reading about this. Like Roswell, <coughs> Roswell was kind of like fringe conspiracy stuff up until the seventies. So this before is... sort of information could be spread a lot more. There wasn't. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there wasn't like a strong definitive i guess definitive is not the word but like like there wasn't a a a, a strong held uh look to book until like the late 70s like early 70s, 80s yeah so so the, oh but oh sorry last thing but yeah like that the the whole thing with like the deformed children sent by the soviet union that's a hard one that's a hard one for me because it's like you could look at any angle. It reminds me of like MK Ultra, where our government claimed that like, well, the Soviet Union's the Soviet Union's trying to do this, so we have to start doing that. Which, who knows if that's fucking real? This so, just could be their excuse because they're trying to reference the ultimate boogeyman. The only the only argument to me, and this is this, I'm I am I'm dying on the, the air conditioner. Just stop and freak me out. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, the the so like in, it's being reported on the ninth, and then it got retracted. I believe it got like basically reported. And Do you know how quickly it got retracted? I believe it was within a couple of days. So like I, I I didn't actually get the real thing, but uh, no, the I real th- yeah, I think you're right about that. But I don't was, know the exact. But by July 9th, uh, he's saying uh, the paper he's harassed that he's even brought it up because now everybody in town's fucking with him. But it, all of this stuff was brought to the Air Force, and the Air Force was basically like, "We'll take care of it. It was just a weather balloon. There's nothing to yeah. see here," kind of thing. And like you said, nobody really mentions it. Until about 1978, yeah, which is a physicist known as Stanton Friedman. Uh, he's a nuclear physicist and UFO research uh, researcher. He he interviews Major Jesse Marcel, who was an intelligence officer who was ordered to assess the Roswell wreckage. He still believed it was not a weather balloon, citing the strength and durability of the foil. Again, that memory foam, yeah, that memory metal, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, uh, the wreckage and thicker. It was thicker, no thicker than a foil on a pack of cigarettes. I thought you'd appreciate that. <laughs> but you could American spirits or Marlboro. You couldn't bend it or dent it with a sledgehammer. Another fun detail. Did you try? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they so, had to have if they distinctly you said you sledgehammer. Cut it. You couldn't burn it. Like I'm like, dude, what is science in the 1940s? Yeah, but <laughs> well, that it's funny too because uh, I'm trying to look up when ARPA started, which is eventually became. Um, DARPA, which so, is, uh, which is, sorry, let me look up when ARPA, but in 19, in the like 1978, when that happens, Friedman tried when he was, that's when he uncovered that the records were, uh, destroyed. That's when he discovered he was interviewing anybody that was involved that would talk to him. Every single person was convinced that it wasn't just what they were talking about, just foil and ropes and all this other shit and sticks. What it was, there was bodies there were um, there was the unbendable metals. There was mm-hmm. the weird things. Just essentially all of the different things. They were told that it was covered up, but he kind of he basically compared it to a cosmic water gate, is what he said. Yeah, so I remember like, reading that. Def- so I am convinced this is this is at the end of like just at this point alone, I feel like I am convinced there absolutely was a cover up because. Of the fact that the lying, the deception, and back then I think it was just so much easier just to be like, 
Yeah. No, it's a weather balloon, see? And yeah. you know, go buy some lard. Well, you know and, I mean? yeah, and, and like we were saying before, they conveniently were doing Operation Monarch at the same time, so it was easy to so, sort of correlate it to that. So this was, this was the fun part. So 1994, the U.S. Air Force releases a, a report admitting it was a cover-up. When was this? 1994. Oh, okay. We're jumping ahead a lot, obviously. We're jumping around now. At this point, yeah. it happened. This is, this is what I... This is my assessment. The, aside from all of the crazy details they give on how <laughs> indestructible it was, they're like, I tried to throw it off a building. You're like, I, I wrapped my baby in it and I put it in a microwave. Nothing happened to the baby. You're like, I banged <laughs> that right off of Cletus' skull and not <laughs> one dent. And I got to tell you, Cletus, he been around. He's a farm boy. He got a tough he head. He got a hard head. He got a hard head. So, uh, everything, everything dents on that... Knucklehead's head. I think this is what you were talking about. So, in uh, it, it was a cover up, but of a top secret military operation, Project Ma, uh, Mongol, Mongrel, 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 Mongrel. Is that what it was? It? Is that what it says? It's, I think I, I think the autocorrect got me, but it was uh, M O G U L, Mongol. Oh, okay. Uh, but it was uh, an operation to discover. Uh, if we are able to record the sound of explosions, oh, you're from right, long buddy. distances through the air, like we were through like water microphones. So yeah, like no, them- just to uh, cr- uh, correction on me, you are right on Mongol. Uh, it was not Operation Monarch. I was getting my M's confused. So, uh, like people would put, like you put uh, sonar into the water to hear uh, long distance explosions. They're trying to monitor Soviet nuclear tests. By, with long range by using microphones attached to weather balloons. But they're super strong weather balloons, apparently. So after uh, they were trying to monitor Soviet nuclear activity at, after World War II, there were balloons tested all o- over the U.S., including near and around Roswell in the summer of 1947. So 1994, they say, yeah, we were, this, that's all it was. We were doing these tests. We did, we did them in Florida. We did some in Virginia, up and down the East Coast. Also, a couple here, out here in Nevada. And that's true. Yeah. They do have records of that. But, again, the, they don't go into detail about the materials that were discovered. They don't go into the detail about the bodies that were discovered. They don't go into any details like that. They just say it was... By the way, there were no microphones found on scene. <laughs> so, like, there was no recording equipment. There were no monitoring or anything like that. All it was was this undistinguishable uh, material. But in 1997... There was uh, the Air Force released another report called, this is my favorite, the Roswell Report, case closed. (laughs) (laughs) This is the government. All right, we've had fun now. Get over it. Shut the fuck up. Well, and that's like the, that also too, uh, it reminds me of the uh, single bullet theory where whenever the government comes out and goes, we figured it out. It's literally like the beginning of like, it's the beginning of. No, you didn't. No. And now I have so many more questions. Three years after the other one where they're like, oh, it was this. And they're like, no, it wasn't. And you're like, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, shut up. So it was actually, <laughs> they said, all right, okay, okay, okay. It was actually, what it was, was uh, they were, the reason the alien bodies that they say they found yeah. was actually, there was this thing that they were trying to do. They were testing high uh, altitude parachutes and they had dummies. Yeah, and obviously the dummies kind of look, you know, they don't look human like. Usually, just, when you get dummies, they're in deformed four finger. They were six feet tall dummies. The bodies found on scene were four feet tall. <laughs> like they are so lazy with this fucking cover up. It's so crazy to me that these are the explanations they're giving. Fifth, that's fifty years after the actual yeah. crash. Yeah. And they're sitting there going like, okay, okay, okay. So well, we were testing these high range and they're like, but they were six feet. It says right here they're six feet. The bodies found were four feet. But you got to remember though, like imagine this in uh, 1997, you were what, like 32? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, you like, like I always joke. I think that's why the sixties has some of the most interesting conspiracies because there's no conception of the internet. There's no conception of the dis, uh, uh, dissemination of in, of information that we have like right now. And so that's why like some of these conspiracies, you're like, 
you look at them and you're like, damn, they were so fucking blatant. But you got to remember the time. And even in 97, like yeah. 97, like we had the Internet. Yeah. But it was in no way like I always love to bring the example of, uh, you know, when the whole when I, after October 7th happens and Israel comes out and say they like beheaded they beheaded you got 40 babies. Yeah, we they beheaded 30 40 babies. babies. And setting aside the just impracticality of like, oh, we're trying to take out a bunch of people. We're trying to murder these babies. Let's cut their heads off. Also, it's, it's also like, give me exactly 40. Yeah, just you know, why me, is it just 40? Yeah. Why, they why would it be a round number like 40? But then on top of that, everyone's able to publicly discuss it. We then can go to the reporter and be like, did you really see the 40 babies? She's like, yeah, just, you know, a guy from Israel told me Kill that. 40 so, babies, get 72 virgins. Yeah. What is up with these guys with numbers? You're able to, like, discuss it and sort of find out the information. So... Back in uh, when when uh, they were trying to get us uh, into Iraq one of the first times, they had this whole story where they were saying Iranian soldiers were tipping over, uh, <laughs> throwing babies out of incubators, and it didn't get <laughs> discovered till like... It, it, but no, dude, at the time... You're, <laughs> You're laughing, but... <laughs> they went Nick you tipping and they just went fucking... Yeah, <laughs> just kept knocking, knocking them over. But, you know, because they've had a boner for Iran forever, they were able to, like, pull, like peg that on Iran. <laughs> People were like, yep, checks out. And it wasn't until, like, 5, 10, 15 years later that they were like, yo, this that didn't fucking happen. That was all staged That's by... so funny. That was all staged by literally, like, a marketing firm to try to get people all in a tizzy. So even in 97, the point I'm making is even in 97, you could see the hubris of the government just kind of throwing that out there. And I mean, like, like how are a they going to baby out of an incubator? <laughs> yeah. How are they going to in 97? They're like, how are they going to fucking check if these aliens were actually four feet tall in the original report? Like you right. actually had to be a guy who was hardcore well, into the shit. Now, if any, now I could just look up. There's some random dude who made a three hour documentary who, breaks down all the inaccuracies bro there's so many discrepancies so like i said the first one that they say okay here's all right so well you know it's been about it's been almost 50 years we're gonna tell you what's going on it was a weather balloon thing we're trying we're listening for some soviets and blah 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 and we did a couple by there they apparently they had beetlejuice explaining it <laughs> hey, let, let me tell you how this is, okay but they have that and they go like, well, there was no microphones in the. What about the metals? And they're like, wait, you keep saying microphones. What's that a reference to? Because they're trying to record the sound from long distances, so there would have to be recording. Oh, equipment but there's no. The, gotcha. Okay. There was nothing found. There were there's found no recording device. Ropes, whatever. A very a rather tough paper. Yeah. <laughs> and like, my favorite part that nobody brings up ever again. What like if that was? If like, I ever write a Roswell book, it's going to be called a rather, a rather tough, tough paper. <laughs> yeah, that was my report on this. <laughs> Pat George, Pat George Roswell report, a rather tough p p paper to read. Um, there was a but so there was many discrepancies. Not only that, Andy. Not only the please height. Stop, please stop touching me. But I want you to make sure that you're engaged. Not only the height of the dummies, but also Andy. Those tests, and it's in the report, were conducted in the 1950s. Roswell was in 1947. In their report where they're saying case closed, they said this is the sufficient amount of evidence for us to feel we have offered every explanation that you're ever going to need about Roswell. And they go, but it says here that this you were, your explanation is from the 50s. Mm -hmm. And they did it. And they, they blamed all of the discrepancies on, let me get this right. Rather tough paper. Time compression. Time compression. Time compression is essentially Mandela affecting, where it's it's basically you just remembered wrong. No, that happened around yeah. then. And they're like, but you, it's in the fifties. And they're That's like, such an official procedure where they're like, and then they're like, case closed. There hasn't, as far as I know, hasn't been any other. Well, no, they're literally, you're literally just like, I thought I went this way, and they're like, nope, nah, -uh. and then that's it. They don't have like, nah, -uh. yeah, no, no, no. So okay, let, let's uh, let's break it down. You've been throwing a lot. You've been throwing a lot out there. Do, give me a quick rundown of the discrepancies you were saying. You were talking about uh, there was no radios. Let me let me see if I have this right. There was no recording devices that would indicate it's a weather balloon. The height there, of the bodies. The height of the bodies was different. The appearance from, of the bodies. They did blame on latex, and some of the manufacturing could explain for why they would look like they would have 
not the correct amount of fingers. The eyes would look fucked yeah. up. The faces. They, they said just it was wanted... a rather tough paper. It was yeah. just papyrus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was actually Egyptians. It was a, it was a manifesto. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, it's, it's, it's a situation where for sure there was a cover up. For sure there were UFOs in the sense that un- unidentified flying objects. Now, the part that I go back and forth with was it government tests, government things, which I, I got I to gotta say, I don't think because I think there's also a level of, and this is kind of funny, this is why I go into the Futurama thing, because there is a level of, like, there was for sure secret meetings happening. Okay. There was shit that was not reported, or yeah. maybe it was, and now destroyed, where they were totally saying... Exact like an alien autopsy most likely took place. You knew that the that was not human material that was found. You can tell a human body. If I'm sure, if you if you're a professional, a medical professional, you can tell if you cut open a med, a human body or an alien body. Okay, so let's talk about that. There were include that. So the, there were alien autopsies. There has to be. That's what I'm saying. That's that's what I'm saying. Is there were? I think that my my summation has been. I think there's absolutely a cover up. I think I So you're saying a cover up in the sense that the government knew what that was. The government didn't know what it was necessarily, but when they found out, I think they said it was nothing. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I think when they, they found didn't know out, what they didn't know what it was, they found all the shit, they realized there was something way bigger going on, so right. they said weather balloon. Right. Okay. So I think I think and and because it's the 1940s, this is long before internet. This is long before again. There, the Roswell thing was like you said, a pretty niche thing and didn't really gain any steam or like popularity to the, nationwide like, to like 1980. Yeah, basically. So like, and then even to where to where they're not even getting actual government responses until the yeah. mid 90s. Um, and, and it's case closed. We did a thing, and they're like, yeah, but that doesn't add up. And they're like. <sighs> Right. So let me, let me ask you this, um, because I I I knew you were going to come in with like the, the pro alien agenda. What <laughs> pro alien agenda? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not Russians, because and I say it's not Russians because you can't just go like like you didn't you again if you found the bodies and you said they're Russians you you can't just go like we didn't know what they were like you did an I'm sure you did an autopsy yeah and you had to go oh these are just fucked up looking humans. Um, but they're not Americans. Well, but here, here's my here's my thing too, because it's like I um I I I've been very public on giving you cre- giving you major credit. It was two things. It was a couple like a year or two ago when the government was like acknowledging aliens exist, and I was like, I don't know if that means they're aliens, but that's something. When like yeah. the government just very openly acknowledges aliens exist and then when me and pat when um when i asked pat to start doing no more heroes with me we would uh we would talk a bunch afterwards and remember when i was like busting your balls about uh bigfoot and then you went into this whole thing about the theories on aliens and um you know, you listen to the podcast. We interrupt each other all the time. I was the, when Pat was going yeah, in. I up. was sitting there, being like, "Go on, sir." Yeah, and that's- <laughs> and and you really, um, so you really put a new fire under me in my intrigue in aliens. Now, I'll be straight up because I don't think a lot of times when people are talking about aliens, they just hit you with the process of elimination. How are yeah. we the only people in the universe? And I think that's a fair point. But beyond that. I'm still, it's partially because I'm new to the topic. I'm still on the fence about aliens in general. So, but what I am intrigued, but what I am intrigued on, and this is what I was going to ask you earlier, is a lot of these sort of UFO, UAP, whatever you want to call them, these, a lot of these instances, they'll have this consistency of like floating orbs and weird lights. And then I've heard, and then I've also been getting into the shit with DARPA. Uh, which they have just openly said, like, DARPA is always 20 years technologically ahead of us at all times. And so it makes part of me inclined to think a lot of this stuff is these, they have this technology, this like free energy technology. And a lot of these incidents are like the tests going wrong and stuff like that. Yeah. And then it makes me, and I'm not convinced of this yet, but I've been, cause I watched, 
because like I said, I was going to say before, I knew you were going to come in with a strong knowledge of the Roswell timeline. So I was like, let me spend more of my time just familiarizing myself with alien shit in general. And I like that pop that popped the theory in my head where I'm like, what if a lot of the alien shit is to keep people like us off the trail of this is actually just they have advanced technology that they understand way more than they led on to believe. So there are lots of theories as far as in the alien community or people that would like follow the UFOs, UAPs in general. Over time, it's been observed that a lot of alien activity has been noticed around or near mountain ranges. Yeah. Nevada has mountain ranges around it. They have rock formations and plenty of places to hide essentially in. (laughs) <laughs> so there's uh, plenty of times where like there's uh been like sightings in there a lot of uh also a lot of stuff and this is something that i've been uh no pun intended harping on myself but there's uh Wait, plenty of pun didn't you say something about Have you harp? been practicing harp no isn't it h-a-r isn't no another Darpa. government thing it's <laughs> <laughs> like the fuck is the reference but it's in the h-a isn't h-a it's d-a-r-p-a damn I'm a real DMB. Wait, do you what? <laughs> do you BM? Yeah, you're a part of Dumpa. Damn it! Uh, you're but dumb no. and you take dumps. <laughs> uh, but there's uh, there's also a uh, a level or there's a they an amount. There's only about two or three percent of the world's oceans that have been explored. Yeah, I think aliens. Personally, I think are have not only visited, but there's plenty of theories with. Uh, especially like the Inanaki stuff like that, where they were here first, kind of things. They were giant. Though the basically they we are the hybrid of the a slave race that came here from another planet. Came here. <laughs> came here. <laughs> created their own little slaves, and then basically they were they kind of I think ended up fucking. I can't remember exactly like the giants story. or something. It was something, yeah, essentially. But it's basically so we're slaves. We're here to mine the gold for their planet. I've heard that one. Yeah, that's essentially the we're same. We're slaves idea. of the Anunnaki. I believe that was the. That's like what like the Bible stories are. Like the slaves mm-hmm. in Egypt are building yeah. pyramids. Yeah, pyramids. If that's real, no. any Anunnaki watching, I would like to apply to be House Anunnaki. Yeah, uh, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not against it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got a fucking atmosphere made of gold. I want to go there, bro. One of my favorite wrestlers was gold dust. So I think there's. <laughs> <laughs> That's the noise you make when they fuck you. <sighs> Take me now, Anunnaki. <laughs> but so essentially, where most likely these aliens were just kind of going around, and the Air Force either wasn't able to track it was tracking it and not knowing what the fuck it was Mm -hmm. or had knowledge of it the whole time. But I think the, the shift in technology after 1947 and the way that we've gone, the shoot, the shoot up essentially that happened right after Roswell kind of also goes to, there was an alien that survived that basically helped to manufacture government. more. Yeah, because I think. And like, that's where Area 51 became like, we got to lock it the fuck down because now we're doing. Now they're actually. So most of the UAP and U, uh, UFO sightings since then have been, I would say, 50% alien, 50% government. But the government was aware of alien activity because they're. So you're saying like 1947 is when the government and the aliens met? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because. I, I've heard yeah, that. Long story short, yeah. Yeah. There's an Anunnaki, right? We're right. They got a gold fucking. <laughs> we're, we're, we're actually writing a TV show about how I met your alien. Aliens go so much deeper. <laughs> um, no, because, like, if you think about it, where. Because, like, I, like, end of the 1800s into the, into the 1900s, that's when the Industrial Revolution happens. And there's, like, a lot of advancements, but there was, that was more of, like, an economical growth. Post nineteen, like post nineteen fifties, yeah. is when you start seeing these like big leaps technologically. Like I'm trying to think, is there anything comparable to like when did the iPhone come out? Like oh three, 
Like I'm trying to think like from 1900, let's say like 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 1880 to 1950. Is there a comparable technological advance that's similar to like we're in 1950, we don't have fucking cell phones and then in 03 you have like a touchscreen phone you can watch I videos think, I on. I think the last one was yeah, the last one was like a uh, combustion engine or we figured out how to fly a fucking airplane and, and shoot people with yeah, it. Yeah, it's like I feel like it was more technology that would invent that would advance in a way where you're like, okay, I could see the progression. It's like, dude, there's technology now that might as well be fucking magic. Yeah, and that's and that's where I think people are like again not asking why are the records. So that's what makes me believe that the alien or that the government was probably observing this activity from January until October and was like. Damn, this is crazy. And also, we got one of them, and well, his name's Bleep Blurp, and he's helping us fucking. In talking about uh, talking about, I was br- I was bringing up DARPA. It does line up with the creation of DARPA because DARPA, I looked it up, was created in '58. Harpa, but Har- Harpa? <laughs> no, 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 no. They disbanded that when they heard your bad <laughs> joke. Uh- <laughs> huh? No, but like DARPA started in 58, but I believe it was actually called ARPA for a while. They threw the D on to call it. Silent H. They threw the D on uh, to. (laughs) I don't know if uh, I don't know if I said this on mic for the real episode or when we were warming up, but I do. I did say Pat. Was it about how much you hate me? (laughs) Pat in the span of like 10 to 20 seconds will go from that might be the worst joke I've ever heard to just I are you our next comedic strong comedic <laughs> voice in this world <laughs> but no before DARPA was DARPA there was ARPA it was ARPA and uh, I believe that started like early 50s late 40s yeah so, so like, you know there are I will say this like once again I'm not convinced of a whole lot right now but there are these things you know it's the age-old uh, process of being a conspiracy theorist where you're like, damn, I'm really noticing a lot of shit. <laughs> and it's and it, and it the conspiracy theory of it, like the government and alien thing is not as separate. And I don't think it's like a cover up in the sense that like, I think it's a cover up in the sense that they're not always telling us everything that they have militarily. They're not always exposing all of their secret weapons. They're not always, they're not going to give out all of their plans and secrets. So I think it's more of a cover up in that sense. And it's not even necessarily of like, it's, I, I, don't, I think it's gotta be somewhere in the middle. You know what I'm saying? It can't, it can't all, it can't all be weather balloon. Nothing happened. Goodbye. And it can't be the Bible was actually written about aliens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's gotta be somewhere in the middle for sure. And that's what I'm saying is like, if you actually like, if you're actually thinking about this lot, Logically, and I mean that seriously, to say if you're actually thinking about the Roswell incident logically, it most likely was the government kind of discovering aliens for themselves as as well and actually handling it kind of perfectly. Like, I, I don't think the government gets enough respect for, like, when they actually do a successful cover up well, it, or, it's, like, it's, do something, like, actually pretty smart, because honestly... Why are you, Why would you tell the town of Roswell, yes, there was an alien crash landed right there. They've actually been here forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, Because yeah. then, then well, in 1947 it, brain, nobody's going to be able to comprehend that. And this is a huge reason why I get They in- want to hear it was just a weather balloon, yeah. nothing to see here. And they're like, good, that's what we thought. Back to our cow so folk shit. This is a huge thing uh, that also intrigues me about the alien shit. I was actually just talking to Nate about this because Nate randomly, which we got to get Nate on a, one of these episodes because he's like randomly texting me uh, MH3, whatever it was, the Malaysian plane and shit. Oh, Nate's i uh, I'm a big fan of that one. Yeah. Do you know that? Oh yeah, well that that was the other thing is I was that was why too I'm talking about I'm like thinking about all this like advanced technology because that is a um that is a huge element of it because the big thing about uh, MH370 whatever it is uh, if you watch the video um, this is what added more intrigue in me if you watch the video there's all those like swirling orbs right before the plane dis- disappears and then I was just watch like I was watching a bunch of Wi Fi videos on aliens and shit. And, like, orbs just pop up all the time. So, like, I was like, okay, all this shit, it's the fucking, you know, the the, the thumbtacks on the fucking board I, and shit. I, I, all this shit starts, like, connecting and stuff I like that. I can't wait to, for us to get into parallel dimensions. Yeah. Par- paranormal shit. Any of that stuff. Because all of it, I think, is connected. 
Yeah. I don't think there's much of a difference. I think what we believe is ghosts is actually alien activity. I think what we actually think is um, night terrors. I think it's alien activity. I think every, mm. like most most of the boogeymen that we've been experiencing, I think, has been uh, basically. And think about it like this: you tell me so the, the about, boogeyman from WWE is an alien? No, gold dust. Remember, okay. <laughs> uh, Stardust definitely. Uh, hello, Dustin Rhodes, asshole. But <laughs> there's a there's I think a level of like conspiracy or whatever. But like it's almost like. Mm. A when you allow uh, uh, immigrants from another country into your thing, there's going to be some shitty people that aren't helping the community, and I think yeah. those are the people that are probing humans, fucking with people, like like doing abductions and stuff like that. I think that's just alien activity of workers that are here <laughs> working legitimately, mining gold in the mountains, doing all that stuff, and then going back and like on their like day off, they're like, let's get fucked up and fuck with a human. That's so and funny. Like, and I really don't think, I don't yeah. think there's any malicious. Int- they know what we're made of. We're lesser people than them. Yeah. So like they know our chemical makeup. They know everything else, but they're just fucking with us. Those are essentially essays from the, from a UFO. It's a essay um, UFO, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that rules me. Um, now you got to do the harp joke again to balance it out. Uh, I ain't trying to harp on it, but <laughs> aliens be raping. Uh, back to the uh, back to the thing we were talking about earlier because I uh, just remembered the one thought I wanted to finish where it was uh, talking about where it's like th- this is what intrigued me about the alien stuff because it's like you know me, I dude, I should have Andy. I, well, yeah, I mean, Alfreda, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Um, now I know, yeah. Do, I do fat guy podcasts, yeah. um, but uh, <laughs> no. So you know, I'm the I'm the first guy to be like the fuck we need for a government. Like I've sat down and just been like, I don't even think we need. You're a big anti government guy. Yeah, I'm a big anti government guy. I think they get in the way, like in day to day shit. But then the alien shit added a different level because it's like. That I never realized where I thought the lizard people thing was just like a fun little thing. I never realized like one one conspiracy is like the lizard people shit comes from the fact that it's like a lot of people in government are sort of this like alien hybrid and yeah. they're the people that the aliens. It's just talk another to. breed of alien. Yeah, yeah. there and then I go and then I but then I start to realize where I'm like Oh, if we're just like ants in a in an ant farm and the aliens observe us and the government's sort of the middleman on that. I'm like, I'm like, okay, if there's a reason to have a government, I guess that's the one. <laughs> by the way, by the, by, but yeah. So it like really, the alien shit really fucks with me with the perception of government. It's always, to me, the perception that bothers me with the alien shit is always that, that thought of what, what do you... What do you think you do on a day to day level that the aliens want to fucking watch you? Why would aliens want to watch ants? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that's the same idea of like, it's not a main character. I think they're just coexisting with us on yeah. the planet and like they have technology to hide, but it's one of those things that you have this thing of the government almost acts like a parent, like a thing where they're like, we know, like, look. Pop Pop's dead, and and he's just never gonna come back. And they go like, "What happened?" And you just go, "Look, I, I'm not gonna." They're not gonna go. The cancer started eating away at his insides, and yeah. then he had to go on a feeding tube. And then after a while, we decided to take him. Off. They're not gonna go into that detail, but the government yeah. goes, "No, he's just in a better place now." They do that well, kind of shit where it's like, but in a in a way, it is the most effective because look at where we're we're fucking streaming right now, in. In a matter of, like, let's say just from 1997, where yeah. they're giving that b- last bullshit excuse, they're like, case closed, okay? It was parachuting fucking dummies. And they go, now, in 2024, we're streaming live to the entire world. Yeah. It's available to the world. Sorry. But- <laughs> just, sorry Don't yeah. look at the number. <laughs> I was looking at the view count. Don't look at the number. I was like, well, not the entire it's world. It's available to the yeah. entire world. Right <laughs> the entire world has the ability. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's like a mixed... Th- I, I'm not like... Because like I said, I'm not like fully convinced of all this stuff yet, but it is... like Because there is a part of me too where it's like, we're, we're chilling. But then yeah. if you look at like the whole span of the world, it's like, yeah, it does feel like it's at the expense of a lot of other death and destruction and awful shit. So 
It is. It, I don't know. It's like a weird thing. I have a lot to think about, but it's like a weird thing to balance in my head. Also, where I always like look at the because this always goes back to like why I got like why I became a libertarian and then an anarchist and then got more like politically minded and shit like that. Where it was like I was just a dude who was chilling, and then I started noticing I was like everything's like. Like, I'm chilling, but there's, like, a lot of fucked up shit in the world. I go, why is all that fucked up shit happening? It's a lot of shit that's not chill out there. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, it's chill for me. Why is it not chill for everyone? And then I look out into the world. I go, oh, that's not chill. Why is that not chill? And I learn why it's not chill. And then I just go, like, oh, you guys are doing too much. Maybe you want to, like, pull that back. And they're like, yeah, there's no signs of us pulling it back. So it's like... At the same time, there is a lot of, like, awful shit. So, you know, as if they are looking at us like ants, you're almost just like, yeah, but, like, you're not taking good care of your ants. Yeah. <laughs> like, a lot of them are getting burnt in the magnifying glass. Yeah. What are you, what's going on here? What are you? And that's, <laughs> and that's the thing is that that does make sense in that sense because you're like, they would think of us in that sense of like oh well i don't give a shit about that like i forgot about that That's yeah it's a, like when you're the garage it's like when you step on a bug and you have that yeah. one friend who's like why would you do that you're like it's a cockroach yeah i don't who gives a shit right. it, and the, what if that happened to you what if you're then then that would be my fate if there was a foot big enough to squish me i'm dead yeah i don't fucking know yeah i don't know what it's like like I say it all the time with jujitsu, and they go like, "Yeah, what if they have the gun?" I'm like, "Then I'm dead." Then I'm, I don't fucking know. Then I'm I don't... laying on the ground getting shot. Right? What do you want me to do? <laughs> I did the best I could. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing. It's such a good way to put. There's put nothing it. else. Like, this it's this, this my peaceful nihilism. That's where I, I go. Yes, there's absolutely nothing you can do. The government is absolutely lying to you. Everything that you know is probably horseshit and it's just complacency much like the people of roswell they've had to do more work to because of our imaginations going so much crazier there's so much other shit that they have to do to keep us settled down nice calm ants and and i believe this and this is gonna this is this is this is where the ruffle feathers this is where i'm gonna start ruffling feathers okay neil degrasse tyson is one of the biggest proponents of disinformation i think in the world i think he tries to yeah he pompouses his way through and doesn't answer straight up questions yeah he start whenever like he's... when you when you unravel it the way we just did and I'm, i know that there's a lot of sidetracks and a lot of fucking jokes and shit like that yeah but legitimately if you actually say yes there was a cover-up and it makes kind of total sense why like explain to me how they figured out the iphone like, how did they just do that? Do you know what I mean? Out of nowhere, how did they figure out? And that's what I'm saying is like shit like that where you're just like, well, scientists did those, blah, blah, blah. But also, where did the technology all of a sudden just come from? Somewhere there was that jump somewhere and it, mm. and it happens right around 1947. Yes, there's a lot of German scientists. Oh, yes, oh, oh, a lot of- I'm so glad you brought that up because yeah. I wanted to ask. I'm so glad you brought that up because I wanted to ask you about this because earlier, the last time I was on my phone, I was Googling when did Operation Paperclip started and I had to not laugh because if you don't know Operation Paperclip, it was basically the way our government got a bunch of German scientists because yeah. whether you, uh, you know, they did a lot of bad shit, but you got to give them credit. Yeah. <laughs> the Nazis were the best at science. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so Operation Operation Paperclip was uh, World War II ends. They get a bunch of uh, Nazi scientists over here and try to get it under the radar so we don't fucking spaz about it. And I look up. I told you when DARPA started, 85, I look up at the time frame of uh, Operation Paperclip and it said it went from 45 to like 58. Right. So that that's what I wanted to ask you because you clearly know way more about aliens than I do. What is there a part of like post Roswell in this like forties and fifties chunk where a lot of like German and Nazi shit pops up? Well, that's, that's the biggest thing too, is like a lot of times where alien or UFO activity is, is kind of monitored, which is funny that they have this too, by the way, this is the funniest thing. So one of those explanations, if you remember, was we were trying to keep track on Russian uh, uh, nuclear tests. That's what it was. With the weather balloons? Yeah. And then you're like, okay. But a lot of UFO sightings are around military UFO or uh, 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 nuclear facilities. 
Okay. They're monitoring our thing. Because this is my thing. I don't think they told us, the aliens, I don't think told us as much as they did. Because that's the other thing. I think quite possibly the Germans could have been working with them yeah. before that. Yeah. And maybe had some, because they definitely had some some heightened technology. But well, the aliens, I don't think, will ever give us full reign of technology because of the fact that they are scared of us destroying their resources. mm so the aliens, instead of being these world dominant, they already dominate the world. I think that the governments that have worked with them, whether it be the Nazis or whatever, because you're right. Why, why were the Nazi scientists so much better than the fucking American scientists, except for that one, Mr. Oppenheimer? Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how come there wasn't anything? Well, in- actually, that one's funny, too. Because oh, yeah, there were Germans. Well, I that learned, were there. well no, like that will, uh, they were working on a bomb, but it was... From what I remember, I was like, I had a, after I saw Oppenheimer, I got on a big fucking Oppenheimer kick, and yeah. I think a part of that was the fact that like they just didn't have enough resources because I think at the time it was like it was around the time when the Germany was getting uh, more pushback and getting more fucked up, yeah. so they like diverted resources away from that and it's like no they would have they probably would have had the bomb before us if they had the same resources we put towards the bomb and there's more there's more of that also that's that, so like that's what i'm saying is like there's german scientists that work with that probably helped to like uh manufacture and everything like that the technologies and that what they were gifted but i think overall I think a lot of the credit that was given to those German scientists was actually alien technology. Yeah. And I think aliens only working with so much because, again, you say, well, how come we didn't have how come we still have rockets that blow up? How can we have this? The communication is so much better. The com- commuting, the materials are so much better. How did they figure out how to man? You can only work with the matter you're given on Earth. You mm-hmm. can create certain things you can create elements you can create stuff but again how are you figuring this shit out how are you computing this oh, how are you ooh, let me ask you and this. i think they're only being given it's actually it's not too dissimilar to a storyline in um a movie i believe it was called the arrival i think was the one with uh, amy adams and hawkeye from marvel yeah and there's this big stone ship and basically, the aliens come here, and they very similar to Are We There Yet? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and they kind of give like they give a, a like they think that they're giving them an advanced weapon to protect the planet, but actually, it's a code that helps un- unlock this other thing that would help the planet. Mm-hmm. So essentially, it's one of these things where like I think they're only giving as much information as they because again, I think they've been in control since forever. Yeah, but now there might be actual like communication. So out of nowhere, where the government goes, now there's aliens, and people kind of go, huh. they're like, they knew we would react that way. Mm. They knew it was safe to say it. So like, this mm. is just it's not necessarily. I think the drip feed has been happening since 1947, since the weather balloon shit. They're like, yeah. that took care of it for a while, and then 1978 well, was the next time they got fucking pressed about it. Well, because that that would make <clears throat> sense too, because like plenty of time to come up with a great story. That would make sense too, because I, I I I've said this before about like how because it's like people always go on and on about democracy, and it's like. Well, if you if you it's like, yeah, there's democracy when we elect people. But then when we're when they're elected, it's not democracy. It's what can I get away with? So you've seen a lot of shit where it's like when COVID happened, they do the six foot rule and everyone kind of saw that. And they just went like, yeah, that makes sense, I guess. You know, they eventually came out. They're like, yeah, we just picked a random number. So like the six foot rule, everyone was like, that kind of makes sense. And then they were like, yeah, let's let's an answer. Let's shelter in place for fucking two weeks, which eventually became two or three years. That'll quit. And then, yeah, and that'll, but then that'll solve everything. But then you see they tried to do uh, vaccine passports, and everyone went, that's yeah. kind of a lot. Yeah. And then the government goes, yeah, no, we we're just kidding about that. So I could, yeah, yeah, I could, see, I see the logic behind the slow drip method. Yeah, I think there's, I think that's been a thing for a lot longer so like there's uh there's been plenty of like there's uh I I think it's called Operation Bluebeam Operation like there's so many different operations it's like 
yes, you can do the research. You can worry about it as much as you want. But all, but all, ultimately, just know, I believe the alien uh, entities that ha- crashed on Roswell mm-hmm. led to basically uncovering the fact that maybe they've been in control the whole time. Maybe even since then. Again, this is 1947. This is after we've dropped the nuclear bomb. Maybe that's why they're working with us over other people because they're like, we need to keep you closest to us because you're the ones that actually used it. Yeah. And you used it to kill people. We need to stop that. And you also, used it twice. <laughs> I get, yeah, I get that logic too because it's like, yeah, the, the, the big thing, like you were saying before, the big thing that stands out is the technological advances post-1947. We're the and psychopaths then, that they're like, we're just going to keep them happy by showing them how to get porn on their phone. Well, I think it almost <laughs> like, you know, going on that logic, it almost feels like we were kind of like, we were kind of like, uh, uh, we were like a stray cat that wasn't doing too much trouble in the neighborhood and they're like all right let them go let them go yeah, yeah. and then in the 40s we made we dropped the atomic bomb which if you look into that it was like way af- it was after we figured out the nazi thing uh japan was look like japan was gonna do uh or, or, what am i trying to say japan was willing to do a negotiation but our government was presenting it with like um, I forget the actual term, but they were like complete surrender. And if you understand Japanese yeah. culture, you're like, you can't do that to them. They're right. not going to do it. So then they use that as an excuse to like, I think they use that as an excuse to like, let's just see what this fucking yeah. bomb does. And first go around, you know, they kill hundred a 100,000 people. And then endless people after that are effective in, you know, to understate it, negative weight. <laughs> so it could almost be like, you know, our country's like the stray cat that's not causing that much problem and then one day you're we going were going for a walk with your dog and, and attacks yeah. your dog and you're like all right no all dude right. it like mauled the kid's face and made him <laughs> deformed and now they're like oh fuck what are you guys doing and yeah, then yeah. that's when they swoop in that's interesting that yeah. yeah that's an interesting way to look at it I, I i get i get the a to b on that one and that's and really it's because still to this day that's where a lot of new york uh, uh, uh ufo sightings are is around nuclear facilities or military installations weapons installations yeah the mothman was first sighted in a uh, a a defunct nuclear bomb shelter in uh west virginia i believe there was bomb storage there was it it was a a quick synopsis of mothman mothman was the uh the it's believed to be another cryptid uh that was first sighted i think in i can't remember the fucking i think it was the 50s okay but I believe 50s or 60s, and it was a it was an entity that was discovered near where they used to store old uh, military ammunition and uh, uh, munitions. What is it? Bombs and shit like that. Yeah. In this, in these bunkers and shit like that. That's where he's first sighted. So that very well could just be another alien sighting yeah. that somebody saw this creature that was like making sure. Okay, there's nothing here. They're not high. like. I'm pretty sure they're here to police us, but it is a coexisting thing. But and at no point are they not in control. And I think that that to me They're not like micromanaging, but they are checking in every Yeah, so they're often. making sure like that we're not trying to hide shit from them or that we're not trying to fucking like because again, we are the only <laughs> country that has used nuclear weapons on people. So on our like enemies, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of the same. It kind of makes sense that like, if if my theory of Bigfoot, you know, uh, ghosts, every kind of like thing that's unexplained mm-hmm. is aliens. That kind of goes into that same thing of like they're just making sure that we're not still storing munitions there. Yeah, and making sure that we're not backhanding the the deal. Which why would you right? But obviously, a crazy wild bunch of animals might possibly turn their back on a superior race because. We did it before, man. Yeah, you were talking about Moth- 1776, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about Mothman. Have you ever heard about uh, the first sighting of the New Jersey Devil? Mm-mm. It was the thirteenth um, child. No, it was actually the first time an Italian guy had ever seen a Mexican. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and when I said that, when I said the thirteenth child, and you didn't even respond, I was like, "Oh, he doesn't know that." Oh, I just this is going to be a fun yeah. Joke. I just have a bit. This is going to have nothing. a fun joke. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> What's the thirteenth child? I'm not going to tell you. 
Well, I wanna... we'll talk about it next time. Maybe we'll talk about the New Jersey <laughs> Devil. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we hit an hour. Is there anything else we need to like go into on this? No, this is. I feel like the again the timeline. There's plenty of places out there, plenty of resources you can find a very detailed timeline. But it really, to me, the details that really stood out to me were like those those couple of times of like, <laughs> first of all, how many, how much. They just try to just run the fuck over the spaceship. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> most likely, there is no wreckage left over, and that's probably when they're like, "Hey, we should probably work with these people." <laughs> they fucking found they found Jim and, and Frank, and they just kept running over them, setting a blowtorch to them. <laughs> it's not doing anything. <clears throat> that rule. <clears throat> that's so fucking. Funny. But like that, and also just the overall. To me, if you were willing to believe any of it. I feel like it's pretty it's still pretty feasible. I don't think it's a big leap is what I'm saying. Uh, no, I, this is a very clear shitty cover up that I think if we kept digging again, if we kept pushing into Area 51, they, we're going to find out shit we don't want to know. No, I uh I got to give you major props like the general the general thing you're laying out if it's true, comes off pretty reasonable. Right? And that's like... It's crazy to say, at the end of this, you're going to think aliens are reasonable. Well, it's just like... The, <laughs> well, no, and because, like, the thing that always gets me with a lot of, like, the alien shit and paranormal shit and stuff like that, where it really comes... Like, like no one ever has, like, a just practical day-to-day -day analysis of mm -hmm. it. It's always, like... It, it's always the someone, spirit realm. Yeah, it's always someone thinking like they're so fucking special yeah. and shit like that. And I'm just and then when you like, I remember when you originally laid it out and you made like I said before, you made the comparison like we're a little fucking we're like an ant farm and shit like that. Because it's like I always make the and I, I try not to be depressing. I do, but I'm like just being truthful. I think. It's why, you know, why I love reading comic books and stories and playing video games is because the sad reality is day-to-day -day life for most of us is pretty fucking boring. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of fun moments during the day, but you're like, what did you fucking do? You know what I mean? You went to work. You saw your wife. You maybe had some... Bad sex. It's just my personal uh, experience. Uh, I and remember. then you had some dinner. You watched fucking Frasier or whatever. Whatever. I'm telling this story in 98. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, uh, Seinfeld, yeah. maybe Modern Family or something. But but yeah, you like watch a TV show. And then, um, you know, and also too, when you look at like big world uh, events and shit like that, like it's, it's, it's one, it's one uh, wrinkle on the whole Israel Palestine thing where you're like, dude, I like, I heard a dude with a theory where he's like, dude, it's just cause Israel wants to control a, a solid trade route. And you're like, dude, I gotta be honest. Cause that like shit like that makes more sense to me because I think the world is uh, broad strokes, like moment to moment, you can have some crazy, interesting, fascinating shit. But if you look at the like broad timeline of the world, how things move and why they move are much more mundane yeah. than you actually want to admit because that's depressing to a lot of people. But the thing is, it's like, accept that, then go on with your day and figure out how to make your day more interesting. Fucking, I wish I was still here, but they're going. The boys are going to see midget wrestling. Hit up Lamar. They're going to see midget wrestling. Oh, tomorrow. really? Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like the 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 the, the average day to day, in my opinion, is pretty fucking mundane. And then it's your job to add meaning and excitement to your life. So this whole concept that you know they were just kind of watching us, because like I said before. Uh, it is, it's completely, I think it's completely valid to be like the odds that we're the only ones in the universe is insane. So it's like the, the idea that they were, they were kind of watching us and then we fucking dropped a bomb and they're like, all right, they're doing too fucking much. Yeah. We need to go send a guy down there. I don't know if that's true, yeah. but that like Mothman that, could be like their sheriff. That you know makes, what I mean? that makes way more sense than fucking Billy Bob in the middle of it. Like. Billy Bob in the middle of nowhere was just so interesting that they really needed to see what was inside his fucking ass. Right. They're just these are just drunk dickheads out here fucking uh, running amok. And there's really nothing we can do. So well, when so when the cops they tell the cops, the cops probably may depending on their clearance, you know what I mean? The cops probably don't know the whole shit. Dude, but if you tell the right one, there's they're gonna act the same way those cops go and go like Pfft. You hear this guy? Seeing space aliens. There was a there was a fucking uh 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 
a politician that like they were pressed about uh, the Arizona lights. There's a, a these this one case of these uh, formation of lights that were spotted by like tw- twenty thousand some odd crazy thousands of people reports of everybody seeing these lights, and then the politician go and like people are going like could it be aliens could it be this. And this politician's like, <laughs> don't worry, we found the suspect and brought in this guy in an alien costume and go, don't worry, he's going to be brought to justice. And then afterwards, they were like, OK, so what was actually the lights? And he's like, you know, actually, I don't know. I saw him, too. It was kind of weird. <laughs> and it's like, dude, don't like you can't fucking yeah. you can't like you and- can't gaslight us. So I don't know where the clearance ends it's probably president i would assume world leaders probably are aware of the whatever deal might well, be I there think but also too the way that the government uh the way that the government parses out information um you got a lot of people like you see how the fucking military runs they they train their soldiers that you're like you don't ask questions you just listen to this guy and that doesn't just stop at the fucking military uh-huh. there's a lot of people well, it's a mixture of two things. There's a lot of Some people, people just kind of fall into that. I feel like people just take that role, even though they're not well, given that role of like, yeah. you have to just listen. No, you don't. You can ask questions and you can do it in not a shitty way, but you can ask and questions. Then, and then there's also a lot of people, too, who just want to like live a normal life. And you got to imagine, too, there's a shit ton of people who see stuff and they go... Nope. Nah, I'm good. I got to go to work in the morning. I'm good. I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like, it's almost the same nah, way you I hear. I just want to watch football. Yeah, I'm good. Know, I don't know. This might be <laughs> maybe this may be daring. Hi, allegedly, you ever hit a deer and you just kind of go like, yeah, it's probably all right. <laughs> you, yeah. just keep, you know what I mean? Like where you're like, it didn't do too much to my car. It still runs. I think he got up and ran away. I don't have to report this. So I'm just going to head out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? 100%. Like, like it's one of those things where like. It's what I say all the time. I don't want to deal with it right now. <laughs> well, it's it's the reason. That's why I don't blame anyone for not wanting to get into a lot of like the sex trafficking shit with right. like the child sex trafficking it's shit. Too dangerous. The You're gonna shit, go to jail. The, the Satanist shit and stuff like that. Where it's like you see that, you realize you're like. About to open a door that won't close. I'll just age. I'll just not open that door. <laughs> I don't need any adrenochrome. Chrome. Yeah. I'm just going to age normally. Yeah, I'll just not open that door. Yeah, I'm going to try to exercise more. Maybe I'll try to eat less taquitos. Yeah, so it's like, you know, there's a lot of... And also, too, like, going back to the example, like, if the aliens just look at us like animals or pets, it's like, think about it what you're... Like, if you have a dog, and yeah. if your dog hears you say walk, it goes... <gasps> right, right, right. Oh, my God. And then, like, if you don't take the dog out... The fuck's gonna happen? Right. He'll be rowdy for a little bit, then he'll go back to normal. Right. And like, what happens every time crazy shit happens? You go, "What the fuck? How can this happen?" Uh, we get rowdy. Wait for... Wait a minute. What did Miley Cyrus say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's really. Dude, what you it can is. do that with a fucking baby. A baby will fall down, or you know, maybe get knocked over, maybe get pushed. But no, literally, a baby will fall down, and then it'll start <laughs> crying. And if you catch it quick enough with like a little toy. It'll forget it got hurt. And that's like what you said. Like, oh, a big awful thing happened. I'm so mad about this. Wait, Miley Cyrus showed her pussy again? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Looks the same. Maybe a little beat up. It looks exactly the way it looked all those 97 other times I she like showed me. It. Yeah. Yeah. Ni- yeah. Miley Cyrus was a big turning point in my head. I was like, I never thought I'd get tired of celebrities showing me their naked body. Man, oh, man. Jesus Christ. It's like, Miley, I get it. I mean... More power to Love you. Love it. Great. Great little titties. Just but enough. Okay. Put a jacket on. Can I go a day without <laughs> seeing your titties, Put Miley? a goddamn coat on. I can't right. open my feet in the DMV anymore. Okay, fine. Piss <laughs> if Piss. I open my Twitter feed, I'm just going to see you just pissing <laughs> on a sidewalk, you I weirdo. can't watch your music videos at the grocery store anymore. God damn it. And I was like, yeah, okay. You pissed on the side of the road. That ruled. Cool. Hot. Uh, <laughs> Send it to me. Hottest shit I've ever DM seen. DM me, for Christ's sake. Send it to me, Miley. Um... Yeah. Well, okay. I think we did it. Yeah. That was a good sode. We did it. Hell yeah. What do you want to talk about next week? Uh, seriously, I, it, I'm could do still it. on a. I, I'm still on aliens. Let's pick a a broad topic though. Uh, Any so like Rosie O'Donnell or yeah, <laughs> you'd be have to be a fucking alien to dissect that. Like bit. kitchens or something. You're gonna need alien. You're gonna need alien <laughs> technology to carve inside of that. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stupid bitch. Broad. Dumb. Bitch. So wait. Uh. Because I'm still no, because like I can do the Arizona lights. Is that like a broad topic? It's a, it's a, it's an instance that happened, alien wise, that was has not been explained. But there's not much. I don't know how much meat is in there. Yeah, we could do. 
I'm trying to think. Of, I mean, we were talking about maybe people the, could pound off in the well, no, no, because I want time to prepare. <laughs> yeah, we uh, you, we were talking about the Malaysian flight. I mean, Ooh, that, that yeah. one's pretty complex. Do you want to do that? That, that would, yeah, we would, that would have, have be, Nate. What you would want to have Nate on that for that, right? Uh, we could see if he wants to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You yeah, do and that? then and that'll be good too because that's uh, I'm going back to Jersey, so uh, no podcast next week. Um, and then that'll give us a bunch of time. We can see if Nate wants to do it. Yeah, I'd be I'd be happy to prepare that. Yeah, yeah, that'd I, be a good one. Because I, I actually there is a there is I think I did find a conclusion to that. Because I um I don't think I told you it. I because uh, that's one I'm really intrigued in. Because I I I love uh I love learning about like all the possible technology that might be there. Oh, and shit this like is that. Andy. It, there's a twist on this one. That I think we'll do the Malaysian one because there's a twist. I know the ending already, so I'm happy to I'm happy to work 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 through it with you. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm, I'm like 99 like, percent confident. This is why I like having a pat because you're way better at the like like you came in with notes. I'm all over the fucking place in my head. Yeah. So I like a good. I, like, I did that for like names and times. Like I yeah. I knew what I wanted to talk about, but yeah. like I want to make sure like certain quotes. Like some of those things were actual like. The real, like the rubber bands, quite a, what was it? Quite a strong paper, quite a rough paper. Yeah, that's like, going to be that's the, an actual quote. It's going to be the subheader of the episode, by the, the way. The episode, what was it? It's, uh, yeah, Roswell, uh, uncovering Roswell would be a good cover. But then uh, uh, this is a uh, tinfoil, a rather tough paper, rubber strips, and some sticks. Ooh. By the way, because you said Some uncovering, uh, when you said uncovering Roswell is a great title, but there is a fifty-fifty uh, chance it's already been some done. random, uh, some random dude already titled it that. So we'll figure out. But I gotta say this: recovering. I, I need to uh, <laughs> covering and then uncovering. Recovering Roswell. Roswell. <laughs> we uncovered it and then we covered it back up because we're like, you know what? It's a cover up. <laughs> um, but uh, oh yeah, I do want to throw this out there. Uh, and this applies to I, 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 I had a new experience with this with the alien documentaries, but it also applies to like government conspiracy documentaries. Chill the fuck out on the music. Oh, you yeah. don't you don't need the intense spooky music for the whole hour and a half. Give me it in the beginning, give me your spooky setup, and then like just fucking whatever. Bring up the always sunny music you hear in every other fucking video. Day man. Whoa. <laughs> oh no, I'm oh. <laughs> No, I meant the, oh. the like bouncy shit. <laughs> I want to re- re- fighter of the night man. Yeah. Whoa. No, cuz in Defender that... of the Sun. What was the show that accidentally did that? What? There was a show that cuz always sunny has like stock music that um, just became um, so um, iconic. Um. Uh, in their show, and then another show started doing that, and it kind of like fucked the show up for a minute because people were like, "You're ripping off Sony." But anyway, uh, if I may, just real quick on that, uh, kind of tying. I don't know. If we're going to include all that commercial talk at the beginning, but the uh, the going back to the what's his face? The uh, what was the show about the three dudes? Workaholics. Yeah, their uh, music is on a, on Taco Bell commercials now. Gotta be fresh. Oh yeah, I'm like, wait, that's a workaholic song. I already know that song. Yeah, but they, we talked about. That got pretty popular. Yeah, but we talked about it before with like commercials are literally just going like because they they no, they're not even in the commercial. Well, that's like, what I'm saying. They're not in the. It's not a workaholics. But no, it's like you just buy that music. It's crazy. Well, no, it's it's what we talked about before. Like commercials are not there to tell you the product's good. They're there to just remind you of things. Yeah. And then you go like, you remember that thing you like? Yeah. Now look at our product. Yeah. That's all Taco Bell. Like a good want. neighbor. Remember? Yeah. Now let Come us, in my mouth. Now let us ignore you when you get into a car accident. Like a good neighbor. <laughs> fuck my wife while I sit in the cuck chair. Uh, <laughs> Is that the song? That's the lyrics of that song? Oh, uh, the uh, I'm going to ask the... You know who wrote that song? Fun fact, Barry Manilow. We're into music now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you for watching. Uh, no, sorry, I just want to get the angry Asian lady next door to fuck my wife. Um, oh, really? Yeah, that'd be awesome. And then I can sit in the cook chair. <laughs> anyway, there we go. That's how we get out of this. Thank you for watching. Next week we'll be talking about Malaysian flight yep. MH three seventy five. I have to say three seventy one. The, I don't remember the what only it was. one anyone's ever heard of. 
I'm a pretty, pretty <laughs> the one that everyone knows. I'm actually a pretty big Malaysian airline head. You're you're big Malay yeah. heads. It's it, like, I mean it's in my top five, but there's a lot people yeah. don't talk about. A lot of times I go there for my Malay overs. All right, thanks for watching the last episode of No More Heroes. <laughs> I'm such a huge be- fart chambered right now. I almost did it there <laughs> just because. All right. Um, well, that's a good place to pause because yeah. I want to go. Putting the long sleeve on was not good. Right. Uh, I'm sweaty. Uh, I'm going to go change my shirt. Pat's going to rip a fart. I'm going to get some more water. Thank you so much for everyone who was watching. Uh, that shit was going up there. This episode's going to go big because we actually prepared. And you, if you like that shit, honestly, and check this us in the more- comments. If we got something wrong, tell us in the comments. And try to be nice, you cunts. 